Hello everybody and welcome to The War Room. This one is for this weekend's UFC main event, a middleweight clash between Roman Delidze and Nasadin Imavov. Now this has the potential to be a very good fight. Um, both of these guys have got great striking skill sets. They're both very fluid in their movement. Both good at kicking, both good at boxing. Both can fight under pressure and fight with pressure. Great. My one concern is that it could potentially slow down in the clinch. We've seen some slow fights, uh, uh, certainly at times um, where we've had just a lot of kind of body lock holding and not a great deal happen. I remember Steropoli being very frustrated after the the fight with Delidze because he, he felt like more could have happened. And, you know, the, the, the commentators were saying the same thing. In fact, Bisping and uh, and Cruz were about to get into it at one point because uh, Bisping was saying he, he needs to do more. Um he can sometimes get get kind of stuck in a bit of a safe zone, especially if he's got someone that's willing to willing to open up. But what's interesting about Delidze, and I will I'll I'll come back to tail of the tape in a second. What's interesting about Delidze, if you go back to his to his uh, UFC debut, um, what was his name? Ibrag Ibragimov. Let me just get it right. Um, Kadis Ibragimov. Um, he did a great job of fighting at distance stinging his opponent with kicks, switching his stance. He was having a great time. He was grinning a lot of the time. And the thing that ended up uh, knocking his opponent out was was a, a, a kick that his opponent had tried to close down. Um, it reminded me a lot of the, you remember the Marlon Marais, um, Aljamain Sterling head kick, which was kind of a, a repurposed head kick that became a knee um, and just caught him as he was moving in. W was it? I get these mixed up. It, it was, it was, uh, it was Aljo because the, Marais through the I'm talking to Jamie past the camera. I'm not I'm not ignoring you here. Um what was it? It was the Jimmy Rivera one and the Aljo one were almost identical, but it was it was the same kick that was thrown. But no, the Aljo one was a knee, wasn't it? Because he closed the distance. Yeah. It, it was, yeah. It it looked very much like that because he was stinging his opponent with kicks and he was turning his hip in beautifully as well. And as his opponent tried to close distance, he ate this knee right on right on the face as he closed him down. Now <clears throat> After that, he so so he had two fights. He had he had the the Ibragimov fight, and then he went into fight uh, John Allen as well. Some good exchanges in that one. Beautiful body lock to take down to uh, ankle lock attacks. He's got loads of different entries into ankle locks. I mean, you remember what he did to to Jack Hermanson, uh, getting tangled up with the calf slicer. There's a there's an upside and a downside to to attacking those ankles, as as you know. It's almost like trying to defuse a bomb. I always feel like you've got a certain amount of time before you're just going to get your face pounded in. Um, and and this is where I think we might have a very interesting ground exchange if it gets there. <clears throat> so, Delidze is very good at fighting on the outside, and he's also very good at moving through range and getting body locks and working a fluid submission attack from his takedowns. Earlier on in his, in his fights, he looked a little bit reckless on the, in the boxing range. And what I will say is that he's improved that tremendously. In his last few fights, particularly, Kyle Daukas, uh, uh, Jack Hermanson, you know, great fights, great performances, good, uh, s solid, um, uh, good solid boxing skills. Phil Hawes, of, of course, as well. And he seems to have really settled down in, the, in, this, in this range. Now it's almost gone the opposite way. And if I think back to the Marvin Vittori fight, he threw almost no kicks in that fight. And... It made it a little easier for Vittori, but who was fighting a very smart fight in that fight, kind of backing up and picking at him as he was moving on. I felt like if we'd have seen more of the kicking game from Delizze that we saw in his early early UFC fights, then he would have been able to get to Vittori more with his hands as well. He just seemed too adamant to be in boxing range. And maybe it's because now he's starting to put people down with them. Maybe he feels like he has a lot of success at this range. So this is where he's going to spend most of his time. This is a fight that he could do a lot of damage from the outside against Imovov. So Imovov, obviously, you know, was, was training at the MMA factory. He's got that very kind of Cyril Gan fluid bouncing in and out of range. Really, really slick to watch him strike, especially when he starts to cruise into range when he feels like he's got his opponent hurt. Um, uh, who was it? Who was it? I mean, Shabazian. But he was, you know... Anytime he closes someone down, he's starting to tee off. He just he just looks so relaxed and so in his in his moment. The one weakness that I would say about his game, and and 
this changes depending on what footwork is using because of course he starts off with that really nice kind of bouncing in and out stings his opponent moves out of range will drift from one stance to another stings his opponent makes it very difficult to to to, to catch him but because he's moving in from outside of a range, if he's got someone that's quite happy to eat up his lead leg, he tends to find himself moving on to a hard low kick sometimes. And I've not seen him have a great deal of, of answers for low kicks. Now, delidze has got a good kicking game generally. And if he invests in that lead leg, he's going to be able to take some of the movement away from him of him of. of. Um, that would be the first priority for me if I was Delidze. I'd want to take away that, that, that fluidity and that spring. Because for me, Delidze is a good striker, but he's not quite as he's not quite as fluid as Imovov. He he's a bit more hard headed. He'll hard check low kicks and he'll trade kick for kick, and he like he likes to get into the scrap a little bit. Whereas Imovov will much, although he doesn't mind scrapping absolutely, he would much rather be a clean striker and stay out of the range and sting and pick at his opponents. So I'd want to take that away from him first and foremost. And the, the easiest way for Delidze to do that would be to take that lead leg away. Now, if we get a performance from Delidze like we saw against Vittori, then Imovov has got his full skill set. He might be the kicker, working at distance and, and chipping away at, at Delidze and then walking him onto punches off the back of that. <clears throat> I think their striking matches up quite well, but I think it's, it, it comes down to who's going to use the, the diversity in their skill set because I feel like they've both got it, but I also feel like they can both get kind of drawn into a let me prove myself to you in this range. For, for Delidze, I feel like it's because he's been having success with his hands. He's been able to land some clean shots and really do a lot of damage with one single punch. For Imovov, he he has this, it, like, like an excitement and an emotion sometimes that takes over him. Like, we saw it when he fought in, uh, when he fought in Paris. What card was that? Uh, against Buckley. And, and, you know, really, really fun fight to watch. Great pressure fighting. But certainly in, at times in that fight, he left himself open in situations where Delidze might be able to crack him with a counter punch, might be able to get a body lock and start to tangle him up and try and drag him to the floor. Um, let me just go to tell the tape quick. I'm just going to jump back because I want to get onto their takedowns and their takedown defense because that's where for me this could get quite interesting and a little bit chaotic because Delidze's takedown defense stat is, is not very good. Compared to Imovov, whose takedown uh, defense is, is is pretty good, um, but then because Delidze loves loves submissions so much and he he throws so many at you, he might find himself in bad positions where Imovov is going to make a smarter decision and start to control and beat him up. You you start to see that uh, that that wrestling heritage coming out of Imovov just a little bit sometimes when he's able to weight his hips into his opponent and bind their legs up and with the Lidze having uh he's very very adamant with his, with his leg attacks he does tend to leave himself sometimes open like I said it's like trying to defuse a bomb you're there you're counting down I've got to get this heel in the right position I've got to get control of their legs so I can talk their knee against their hips and do damage to the ligaments and then as you're doing this you've got someone going tick Talk, tick, and you can only take so more of that, so many of those shots. And also, you've got to bear in mind, not only is it difficult to get a heel hook in the right position when you've got someone that's trying to defend it, but when you add punches into the equation as well, you might be getting mildly concussed at the same time as trying to remember that you're even doing a heel hook. So that's something that's that's an area where Imovov could potentially, if they move straight through the body lock range, where I feel like Delidze could be problematic. And we move into the grappling range, we're going to find Imovov on top position using ground and pound. And that's that's probably where he's going to find his easiest route to victory, if I'm honest. Even though Delidze's got good submission attacks in, and he can be very, very problematic, um, he does tend to opt for inversions. He does tend to go for arm bars from guard in positions where he can be stacked and trapped. And knowing Imovov likes to work up against the fence in those clinch positions, if they find themselves in these scrambling attacks, you've got to assume that they're going to be quite close to the fence, which is really going to favour Imovov. <clears throat> okay, little peppermint tea. So, 
<clears throat> Both of these guys were, in fact, I've got it written down here, it's probably easier. So Delidze, 12 and 2 is his record, 7 knockouts on his record, 3 submissions, so he's got a, a high finishing capability. 2 heel hooks and a rear naked choke. Um, his heel hooks were earlier on in his career, I, I don't think he's had anything, yeah, his first 2 fights. In fact, all submissions are his first 3 fights, um, all first round. <laughs> uh, heel hook, heel hook, rear naked choke. Um... On the other side, Nasadina Mavov, 12 wins and four losses with that one no contest, the, the the clash of heads. Five knockouts, four submissions. So again, uh, high finishing capability. Two Reineke chokes, a Bravo and a Kimura. I feel like the 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 submissions of Nasadina Mavov are maybe more tailored towards MMA. I feel like he's going to choose to apply a submission in a position where an opponent is, has already been beaten up a little bit, whereas the Lidze is going to invert and chase ankles when on a fresh opponent. That's where you've got to kind of weigh up the benefit and, and uh, you know, benefit and... Uh, what's the word, Jamie? What's the phrase? Benefit and drawback analysis? What's the... I don't feel like that's accurate. Benefit and something. Anyway, you get the point. In those situations, you've got to determine... And and it was funny because and, and I I know I'm I'm criticizing, but his corner man said to him, "Don't go for the heel hook unless you're going to get it," <laughs> which don't make a lot of sense because you're not going to get a heel hook unless you go for it. But you're going to tend to go for a heel hook and probably not get it most of the time. Um, you've got to weigh up in that situation whether you're going to be able to grab a heel hook quick enough to be able to do the damage to the knee like he did against Buckley. You remember, uh, no, Buckley H Hawes, um, or um, you've got to be confident that you can control and keep your opponent away from you for long enough to be able to secure this heel hook without taking too much damage. Like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a time bomb type of situation. And Delidze leaves himself in those positions a lot of the time. And I feel like Imovov will certainly make the MMA decision and go, hang on a minute, I can sprawl here, I can stack, I can elbow, I can punch. Um as far as height and reach, I mean, it's, it, there's an inch in it. It's not even really worth mentioning. 6'2 to, uh, to Imovov, 6'2 to Delidze. The inch reach advantage goes to Delidze at 76 to 75. Um, Delidze's never been stopped. Um, and I, I, I do think, to be honest, that even though this is a five-round fight, and he is, he is new to five-round fights from what I remember... Um, he, he seemed to look like he was coming on a bit stronger against Vittori in that third round. So it, it bodes quite well for him, I think. Because because especially now he's down at this weight class. You know, he he started off at light heavyweight, didn't he? Then he moved down to middleweight for Trevon Giles, yeah. Um one of the one of the benefits of moving down a weight class, of course, is that you're not carrying that additional weight that you potentially don't need to. The other benefit I mean, there's a list, I could give you a bunch. Um, the people that you're up against are potentially not as big or as strong as the people in the weight class that you're left above. The other benefit, which sometimes goes unconsidered, is that you have to do something to get that weight off, right? <laughs> you have to do treadmill work or, or bike work or something. You, you build up your base level of conditioning fairly well by accident just because you've got to get the weight off. So when you, when you tend to see someone moving down weight classes, unless they're doing it in a very... Um, risky way and they're just trying to drop weight quickly if they're doing it properly like a Jared Cannonier did for example or you know Roman Delidze when he moved down to, to middleweight you can see he took the weight off in the correct way which means he would have done the conditioning to go with it so I, I feel like this might be a, a good five round battle like we know him of of he's going to stay stay in the fight for as long as he can he's, he's going to battle he's going to push um, he's got one loss by guillotine I think it was his pro debut back in, back in the day you know and that's that goes with the, the 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 idea of him getting excited sometimes. I do think sometimes he is he, he, he can be emotional and that can tax his conditioning. Um, but I expect this to be a very very interesting back and forth fight. And I think as long as it's in the striking range, we've got Delidze. If he's making smart decisions, he's going to be using his kicking game. And he's going to break Nasadina Movov's lead leg down just try and slow him down as much as you can, flatten his tires, and then whatever else you want to do on top of that afterwards is going to be easier. For Imovov, I want to be using that in and out motion and trying to get Delidze to miss as much as possible. He really winds up into his kicks. You can see him stepping through sometimes, and 
a lot of the time he he'll give away that he's he's going to do a kick. This to be honest was one of the things he really struggled with in his middleweight debut against against uh, Trevin Giles. He would throw kicks with such a telegraph that Giles was able to just punch over the top and knock him off balance. Something that Imovov is definitely going to be watching out for. He's going to try and counter those kicks with punches. So the more space Imovov gives him, the better, because then uh, uh, Delidze has got to move through that range to throw the kicks. And because he can be so telegraphed doing it, that's where Imovov has the opportunity to decide whether he wants to move, trying to catch the kick and take him down, try and counter with a, with a straight punch over the top. Um so the space is going to play well for Imovov. If he has the Delidze that we saw against Vittoria, where he's trying to march into range and throw punches, again, he needs to be on his toes. Imovov's going to have to use that footwork that we've seen him utilize before. And if Delidze is not working on his lead leg, then as long as his conditioning's in, on point, um, he's going to be able to maintain uh, that movement for 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 the, the the duration of the fight. I would imagine. I mean, you know, he d he does tend to slow down a little bit, but. He has got good footwork, and I do feel like he is the one that's going to make the smarter decisions with his footwork. The risk when Delidze starts to move forward, because now he's got the confidence in his hands, he's going to throw with heat, and he's going to try and connect and do as much damage as possible, because he doesn't mind falling into a body lock. We, we saw against Staropoli, he was in that body lock, he was he was on his case the whole time, and... Uh, the 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 fight with Jamie and I were just talking about it before we started recording. The finish that that always rem reminds me of the Lidze was the knee against uh, Kyle Daukas. Like there are a couple of times where we've seen his flexibility. I'd, he's got really good hip dexterity and flexibility, and one of the reasons why he's able to attack leg locks the way that he does and invert the way that he does. But that 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 flexibility transfers into the striking range as well. When he's got Kyle Daukas in a clinch, and he can bring his knee up to the up to his shoulder height to crack him in the face and and, and smash uh, smash his orbital bone. Um, this is where Imovov could get slowed down in this fight. Delidze right close, throwing power punches into a clinch, controlling him with that body lock, trying to trip him, drag him to the floor, or you know potentially drag him into a back take or an ankle lock um but also has to watch those strikes at close range as well because Delidze uh he's very creative with his strike and you can tell there's a real enjoyment to to the work that he does and when someone's really enjoying what they do they tend to be more creative and uh and, and I think we're going to see that out of both of these guys um <clears throat> just going back to their takedown defense so <clears throat> Average total fight time leans slightly towards him. Of course, that's because he's had uh, he had that five rounder <clears throat> um, height and reach we've talked about. Uh, strikes lander per minute leans in Imovov's favor, but that's that's predominantly because he's had longer average fight time and he's and he's he's been in those ranges where you know he's been able to uncork combinations of punches. Um, fifty three percent striking accuracy, fifty eight percent take uh, uh, striking defense. So they both lean towards Imovov. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the grappling, both even at one point seven for submission average, but if you look at their takedown defense, that's where it really stands out. The difference, um, Roman Delidze has got thirty three percent takedown defense compared to Imovov at seventy two, and I wanted to kind of quantify them a little bit, so I just wanted to check. So, Delidze has thirty three percent takedown offense uh he stopped four takedowns he's been taken down eight times um on the other side Imovov has stopped 16 takedowns with takedown offense of 72 percent um I think that's more likely because Delidze doesn't mind falling to the floor quickly and starting to attack um uh, starting to attack submissions but what that does mean is that if they do get tangled up Imovov can most likely land in top position if he's prepared to immediately defend submissions because Delidze is going to drop for ankles he is going to try and do chaotic things to try and get a grappling advantage and Imovov if he makes smart decisions he's going to find himself in positions where he's going to be able to hit Delidze while Delidze is working on ankles or arms and stuff um, so smart anti-grappling from Imovov is going to be a big key and I do feel like his game does lend itself uh, very well to that um, what else oh yes one thing I, I will mention about Delidze is his fight against Jack Hermanson. He, it took him a while to kind of get Jack Hermanson's rhythm. <clears throat> and and 
in my of courses, in my opinion, and you know, it, they, they're different. Of course, it's difficult to compare. But if I'm looking at someone who's a, a more technical striker and more crisp and clean, I'm going to point you towards Imovov, just because I feel like his technique is sharper and, and more well delivered. The thing that was challenging for Delidze against Hermansen was his movement, the, his ability to bounce into range and give you the impression that he's going to do something, and then he bounces out again. And you know, it, it, the awkwardness was was quite problematic for Delidze, and that. If I'm Imov, Imovov, is something else that I'm going to be looking at. I'm going to try and utilize my my in and out movement to to force Delidze to freeze up a little bit. This is why, if I was Delidze, I would I would try and return to to my kicking game the best I can, um, because well, I mean, he's got he's got really conditioned shins. We saw that. I think it was his his UFC debut where his opponent kicked him in the shin and he checked it. And his opponent kind of, it was it was his it, it was his debut, and and he kind of his opponent kind of pulled his leg back like oh like he really hurt his shin, and you just got this grin come across the face of Delidze like yeah conditioned shins <laughs> come and get it, um, I, I I would be trying to do as much damage to that lead leg of Imovov as possible even if he is trying to check those kicks, um, but I very rarely see him do any kind of any kind of lead leg defense. So unless he's added something new to his game, I feel like that's an easy way to get to him of. Um, but that would require Delidze making smart striking decisions and not just kind of get drawn into the, let me show you how powerful my punches are. Um, yeah, I think I've mentioned it all. This 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 should be a good a good scrap. I, I just hope we don't get those moments where it kind of lags and there's a body lock position and they're both a little bit tired and they're both not really doing too much. It might be a bit of a standoff for a while as well, given the fact that they do both know that one another are rather dangerous uh, with their strikes. But, you know, I think with 25 minutes, something's going to get going. And I think we're going to see quite a mix of ranges in this fight. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me if we see Nasadina Movov just make better MMA decisions and that might give him the edge. All right. Enjoy these fights and I'll see you next time. And I've just remembered before you go, we're back this weekend with the aftermath. We'll be streaming at 7 p.m. UK time on Sunday. So uh, come and join me. Questions, tea, rum, whatever you're digging, bring it on Sunday and we'll have a chat about the fights. I think we're going to get some good scraps this weekend. So hopefully there'll be lots to, lots to talk about. All right. I'll see you on the live stream.